Welcome to Slow Home Studio. Too many people live in badly designed houses and we want to change that. And today we're actually going to be finishing off Roy and Tina's project. It's been a while. We've been, had a long extended conversation. Yeah, well there's been so many comments and everybody has had a lot of conversation about it and a lot of interaction from Roy and Tina themselves which has kind of taken us on a slightly different path than what we uh, thought about originally. But it's been great. I have to say it's been really good. And the last couple comments about the client involvement in the process have been really interesting and I appreciate everybody's feedback on that because the clients really do add a, a whole other dimension when they're putting feedback into the into the project. Themselves. And yeah and Brad is right too when he said you know sometimes it's it's also then the consultant's job to pull things back. There's a time when you want to extend out and then a time when you need to rein things in. And maybe we'll talk about that a little bit next week on one of our segments. Anyways, today we're going to show you something that, that Matthew and I have been working on and we thought that we would try something that nobody else had done. Not that it's any better, it's not necessarily the best solution, but it's a different kind of an idea. So let's have a look at that. We all know this, this is the base house and uh, here we've got our existing and I just also want to thought it would be good to walk through the kind of thought process and really there's kind of three things that we do. We talk about location, then we talk about layout, and then we talk about logistics. And so yep. if we think about it from a location point of view, the existing kitchen is right there. That's one option. Yep. And now everybody, or every, almost everybody chose that as the place. But I'm going to suggest instead that we consider what would it be like if the kitchen was there because it consolidates the living and dining space. And together. you have a theory about putting kitchens in corners because you always say that you like the idea of kitchens being backed into the corner yeah. because it really automatically sets up the kitchen as being outside of the main zone of circulation. And that's something that everybody has to deal with with the kitchen in the middle of the plan. That's right, because as soon as you do this, then you're always walking in between. Yes. One, one through, through that and you have to be careful. So now if, if we say that we're going to put it there, now we can start to talk about the layout, the yep. layout of the basic structure of the kitchen. And as you say, we've got a big corner in the back. So if we just put the, put the, uh, the back um, work, work surface there, then we can have a big island there. And we've also got room for a smaller space right there. And I'm going to show you that we've actually got the ability to make a connection right there. This is a little fat today. I put that pen weight Thank on. I like much. my pen weight a little fatter than, like than you do. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I like that. Make sure drawings look better. So if we think about that as being the basic layout, and now we look at it, we can see that we actually do have now a large open kitchen arrangement and how that is now completely outside of the zone of the rest of the circulation. You'll also notice that we put back this because we know that we want to have a separate dining area. So we put back this, this is, this is going to have the wall enclosed within it, yep. but it could have some storage, maybe something that looks out from the dining room, something. But I'm going to put it in the middle like that so that it also makes it possible to, to um, circulate on either side of it and to at least get a sense of the overall. Yeah, I think what is really important too, the fact that you've located the island in front of the sliding doors is something people shouldn't be afraid to explore no. in a renovation because that's actually a good space for them. We've done renovations where the side of the island is in front of the sliding doors because in that case, the sliding door is purely for access to the outside. Plus you get a whole bunch of light in the kitchen. It's a great place uh, to get natural light. So if we've got the location done and the layout, now let's look at the logistics and that really has to do with the appliance triangle. So I'm going to put the, uh, sink on the island just because that means we don't have to worry about a downdraft. We think about getting the stove over on the other side. We put the refrigerator over there. We've got a good efficient work triangle. It's out of the way of circulation. It gives us a stand-up pantry over on that side. We see that we could do that. And if we, we design the island cleverly, we can actually have a seat on that end, as you were saying, that relates a little bit more to the outside. Yeah. Now let's just finish off one last thing, just showing how we can get the furniture. What I think this does is that it gives us a really large family room. And I like the way that the family room or the kitchen relates to the family room. Plus, we still have that dining room that's over there on the end. Yeah, and the thing that's interesting, too, is that the focal point here is on the same plane as the view to the outside, which I think is effective because they don't compete with each other. You're not having a sideways glance. You could add a fireplace there as well if you wanted to and work that into the windows. So that's our idea. It's one of a whole bunch of others that the group, the studio has provided to Roy and Tina. I hope that it's helped and uh, have a great weekend. And next week we've got some new programming and another design project. See you Monday.